Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Someone who watched our recent episode, I've Got That Sinking Feeling, where we talked about density and buoyancy, emailed us with a great question. How do submarines both float and sink? This is a great question. What it comes down to is that submarines can control their density. I remember you talking about that. You said density is how much stuff is packed in a given amount of space. Right, think of it like this. This is an object, and this is matter. So we have this little bit of matter inside all the space. By comparing the amount of matter to the total amount of space, we get density. In this case, we don't have a whole lot of matter, so it's not very dense. But if we add in more matter, the object becomes more dense. Didn't you also say in that episode that objects less dense than a fluid float and objects more dense than a fluid sink? Absolutely correct. Think of it like this. This can is made of aluminum, a metal more dense than water, so it would sink except as filled with air, which makes the whole empty can less dense than water, so it floats. But if we fill the can with water, then all the air that was keeping it afloat goes away. Since it is just the aluminum now, which is more dense than water, it sinks. So submarines can control their density by controlling how much air it has inside? Exactly! A submarine actually has two holes, an inner and outer hole with a gap between them. That gap is called the ballast. When the ballast fills with water, the submarine sinks, but they can also fill it with air to make it float. So where do they get air at the bottom of the ocean? Well, they take it with them. Submarines have compressed air tanks. Basically, they take a whole lot of air, squeeze it down to a very small space. When air is released from the tank back out into the ballast, it expands back out and pushes the water out of the ballast to let the submarine float. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're going to be making a model of a submarine. To do this, you'll need water bottles, eight to 10 pennies or washers, tape, a clear tube about six feet long, balloons, rubber bands, and something to poke a hole with, like a hammer, a nail, or a drill. And by the way, whenever using sharp objects like nails or drills, always have adult supervision. First, carefully cut four holes near the bottom of the bottle, and another four near the top of the bottle. Remember, power tools are dangerous. Only adults should be allowed to use them. Next, tape four pennies near the top of the bottle and another four near the bottom. Be careful not to cover the holes. Carefully cut the hole into the cap of the bottle. Now push the tube a few inches into the hole in the cap. Use the rubber band to fasten the balloon onto the tube on the inside side of the cap. Insert the balloon into the bottle and twist on the cap. To work the submarine, drop it into water. A large sink or bathtub works well if you don't have a giant tank like we do here in Flowworks. The air escapes the bottle from the holes while water flows into the bottle. That's just like when air is removed from a real submarine ballast as it fills with water. Right, once filled with water, the density of your submarine has increased enough to be more dense than the water and it sinks. To make it float, blow air into the tube and inflate the balloon. I get it. Just like when compressed air is used to fill the ballast of a real submarine. Exactly. As the balloon fills with air, your submarine's density decreases until it becomes less dense than water and floats. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>